It's possible that until the countdown hits zero, it doesn't link up. Hmm. So, JJ, I was thinking potentially uh, I'd let you go first and kind of just like state your position and I state like my position and then we kind of go back and forth from there. So that sounds sensible to you? Sounds great. Cool. Thanks again for doing this. Oh, thank you. Like, uh, thank you. Like, seriously, I want to say that live as well. I want to encourage this kind of debate way more. I think this is super, super productive. Instead of, you know, like people just dunk each other on Twitter, I would much rather people just have discussions about things and just like be open to, you know, being wrong. Totally so, agree. Yeah. So, yeah. Pleasure. I'll, yeah, for sure. It's going to be fun. <laughs> I think so too. I, yeah. I know for sure I'm going to learn some things. So, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it'll be fun. Whatever happens, it'll be a good time. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Oh, okay. So I can I can see the feed, but are we live on YouTube? That's the question. Should I open YouTube separately? Or should I, I just have the Riverside tab open on my side. I just cl kind of closed everything else. Yeah, perhaps if someone on YouTube can just say. Yeah, it doesn't seem that. to be live. Yeah, so we're definitely feeding into YouTube. So maybe I just need to do something in here. I'm in the YouTube dashboard. Oh, it's live. People are saying it's live. Okay, in okay. which case we'll go on. So we're a little bit short on time. We've got exactly one hour, so I'm just going to do a quick introduction. So um, Connor Leahy is an AI researcher working on understanding large ML models and aligning them to human values. He was a co-founder of Eloitha AI and is now the CEO of Conjecture, which is a team of researchers dedicated to applied and scalable AI alignment research. Connor believes that transformative artificial intelligence will happen in our lifetime. He also believes that powerful advanced AI will be derived from modern machine learning architectures and techniques such as gradient descent. Connor is currently the main spokesman, uh, in my opinion, for the AI alignment movement. And even though I personally disagree with Connor on AI risk, I think uh, he's a thoroughly decent bloke. He's achieved legendary status in the community. He's a good mate of mine, and I'm very excited for this discussion today. And also, uh, Joseph Jacks founded OSS Capital, and uh, they are the world's first and only um, early stage VC fund um, focusing um, on commercial open source startups. So it's an honor as well, Joseph, to have you on the show today. Now we're gonna be discussing um, a, a debate on AGI. Is it existential or is it non-existential? Joseph will argue for open source <coughs> AGI and why he believes that it will not pose an existential threat to humanity any differently than humanity itself already poses an existential threat to humanity. And Connor Leahy will argue for not building AGI and why he believes that it will absolutely pose an existential threat to humanity. Now, Joseph and Connor have asked to self-moderate in this discussion, so I'm going to bow out from here, but I really hope you folks enjoy today's conversation. So with that, I'm gonna pass the baton over to you, Connor, to make starting statements and have a good time. Thanks, sir. Yeah, thanks, Tim. I want to just like say thank you to JJ for agreeing with this. This was his idea. And, you know, we have disagreements on this topic. And I just think this is really great that we both get the opportunity to just kind of like respectfully, you know, talk about this as two adults, seeing where we agree or we disagree. So really, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Really enjoy it. I look forward to hearing your points and hearing mine. The goal for this discussion, as we've said before, I think should be to like persuade the other person per se, it's to stare at opinions clearly, see where we, we agree, disagree, maybe learn something from it. So yeah, thanks for, for, thanks for doing this. And I'd like to offer you the chance to start us off with uh, your position first, if you'd like. Thank you, Connor. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really grateful for your open uh, openness to doing this as well. Um, you know, we've, we've interacted a lot on Twitter over the, over the years and um, I'm a fan of your your work as well. Like Tim said, I have a lot of respect for your uh, your research and points of view. I've probably spent you know upwards of five plus hours of my life listening to you on on podcasts over over uh, you know maybe more recent history. You've been more more active um, online, so I'm grateful for that as well. Yeah, I, I guess the the crux of uh, kind of reaching out to you is that I do uh, you know sort of deeply disagree with the view that. Um, the sort of materialization of a, uh, AGI. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's probably worth, you know, roughly defining that f for the listener. Um, uh, you know, it, I don't think we have universal industry or, or human consensus on what AGI even really means, 
which is actually quite an important piece to any discussion uh, when you when you talk about uh, you know believing one thing or another. You have to actually have some consensus on what you're actually talking about. Um, but um, I don't believe that AGI in the sort of like most common uh, uh, sense of, of, of the definitions that get thrown out represents an existential threat to humanity. And, and, and as what Tim said, to kind of complete that, uh, any different than humanity itself already poses a threat, um, you know, to itself, right? Like sort of tautologically. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Um, so in other, in other words, sort of said differently, um, it, it 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 does and it can represent an existential threat. That that, that, that to, to to be clear, right? So there is actually some nuance to this argument. I'm 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 certainly not coming back and saying like there are absolutely no risks. You know, this is not a uh, a, a sort of major uh, development in our you know uh, current species that we shouldn't be really deeply concerned about and worried about. Um, so that last part is a big reason why I have a lot of respect for you and a bunch of other really smart people working on on um, sort of alignment and policy issues from different perspectives. But I, I really just kind of want to reinforce, I do take objection to the view that, um, uh, you know, uh, which I, I feel is under undergirded by a lot of like yeah. assumptions that when AGI occurs, there will be this really fast, uh, which I think is kind of a, a, a reference point that, that people often use, I think is useful, very fast takeoff. And as the takeoff occurs, um, the AGI will absolutely, you know, uh, do whatever uh, uh, is possible to, you know, completely eliminate and wipe out, you know, all the humans, right? And and so um, uh, I guess that's my point of view, I'm going to like state why I, I, I don't, I, you know, uh, uh, I'll, stop, I'll stop there maybe. I'd love to hear maybe like five minutes on why you think that, uh, if that's cool with you. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that there's a bunch of assumptions that are built into um, the view that AGI poses this existential threat to humanity specifically very rapidly or sort of specifically as it propagates quickly and, um, you know, within some sort of like finite or short time frame after that occurs um you know humanity is 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 likely to experience an annihilation right like i mean these are like sort of that's, that's at least my interpretation of you know the sort of argument is it's not a sort of like you know um there's clusters of people that could be harmed or sort of classes or, or sort of you know a geographies it's all humans um right so sort of like as a unit and um I guess I'll try to sort of enumerate the, the points on, on why I, I, I don't I don't I don't think that that risk is, you know, uh, really uh, real or, or merited, at least in, in terms of the concern that people are, are espousing, you know, these days. Um, it, you know, the, I'd say the first one is I don't think we have any evidence whatsoever um, to, you know, point to and and and, you know, sort of assess um, uh, critically. Uh, that says we have even um, uncovered any degree of fundamental intelligence in, um, you know, in digital computing. Um, I think that the, the, the current uh, language models, diffusion models, all the different um, AI systems that are coming out, which are fund fundamentally based on these, these, these structures called neural networks, are a new type of information compression and discovery. I do not think that they represent intelligence in terms of like how humans, um, uh, uh, you know, think and create and and reason. Um, I think that there are rough approximations to some of those things that you can kind of have longer philosophical arguments on. It's like what constitutes reasoning, what constitutes intelligence, uh, you know, on the edges of a, a long tail of distribution. But I don't think that like um, any of the current systems even remotely roughly approximate um, actual intelligence. And so when we when we take the leap from current AI systems are um, likely to reach not only human level intelligence, but superhuman level intelligence. And then from there, um, actually, uh, you know, take off rapidly and kill us all. I think that there are just so many massive assumptions along that path that um, I, 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 I personally believe have, have not been uh, tested or um, or proven out in, in, in any concrete way uh, to actually defend that, that sort of set of assertions. I think the, the, that's, that's like one big kind of aspect to it. The second aspect to it is just sort of pragmatically, you know, sort of like assuming that's actually not an issue, assuming everything I just said is actually not accurate. And we are on this sort of exponential curve of 
um, uh, you know, scaling intelligence. And some of the, you know, uh, evidence points we have today or artifacts are things that you can point to and say like, yes, that represents reasoning. Yes, that represents intelligence. And now we're just kind of scaling it further. Um, I think that another really big um, issue with the argument of, you know, a a AGI when it materializes will wipe us out is uh, practically how, right? And, 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 and I think um, that's kind of um, another very weird and uncertain and very blurry um, kind of uh, topic that I'm very far from even remotely being convinced of. Uh, and I guess I'll just like lay out a few points here. So um, probably the strongest, you know, maybe examples of defending that view would be like, you know, uh, really uh, uh, viral pathogens that, that are sort of um, uh, designed and, and, and distributed somehow via AGI or with the help of AGI. Uh, and, and those, those pathogens, um, obviously start to spread and, um, you know, we just went through COVID. So this is a pretty visceral example. People can really resonate with that. I think that that, uh, uh, that argument requires a lot of human, uh, uh, cooperation and, uh, passivity. And, and we, we you know, we, 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 we literally have to like forget all the things that we just learned through the COVID experience um, uh, for that to just, you know, continue to, um, uh, uh, you know, wipe out more and more of humanity to the, to the extent that like we're completely, um, you know, annihilated, um, I, you know, so I don't, I don't really see that. I, I, I was driving around a couple of days ago. So I have a Tesla I drive around. This is one of these cars that's just kind of connected to the internet and it has a neural net, to, you know, trying to kind of figure out self-driving. And one thought was sort of like, you know, well, I guess if there there's a rogue AGI out there that you know tries to go out into the internet and identify you know uh, uh, vehicles carrying humans uh, and take over those vehicles and just you know kind of steer them off the road or you know accelerate or brake in whatever dangerous conditions. I guess theoretically, if there was enough coordination, um, you know, it could 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 harm or maybe kill a lot of the people in those vehicles pretty rapidly. And I was sort of thinking this viscerally in my head. It's kind of like, okay, I've really got to think critically. You know, if all this really happened. I'm, I'm physically in this car, and you know, it's connected to the internet. And you know, presumably there's like, you know, really robust, you know, uh, human um, uh, designed C C plus plus code, like preventing the neural net from like having these different attack vectors of control from like an external model that would want to like direct it somehow. Um, but like, let's, let's say that didn't exist, and 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 you know, the car. Could be, uh, uh, you know, uh, taken over by some 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 autonomous uh, agent somewhere. Like even in that scenario, and, and, and if if the, you know one to two million, I don't know what the exact number is. You know, Tesla fleet currently on the roads was completely compromised. Uh, you know, at the same time or something, or maybe maybe gradually over the course of a couple of days. I, I still find it hard to believe that that would even represent a serious existential threat because let's say you could kill maybe a few thousand people or tens of thousands of people. Wow, that's like really horrific and really horrible. It's it's a very far uh, cry from, you know, massive annihilation of, of the human species. And so I just think like the uh, proximity to massive sort of like instantaneously connected in terms of like devices connected to the internet that could have, you know, sort of like AGI systems compromise them. Um, I think is like a, 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 a really kind of almost like a non-issue, um, you know. And I guess like the, the the final piece, maybe, and there's a bunch of other things as well, but like would be um, we don't have embodied mechanisms yet to really like worry about. And I mean, and I go to like the Westworld, you know, series um, for this. Like we're not in a current reality-based reality where there are autonomous like uh, uh, devices. Uh, you know, with enough propagation to go to, to, to go around and be like one to one paired with each human living on the planet and, um, uh, you know, uh, go out and, and, and do really, you know, sort of very nuanced and various things, even even the current like cutting edge drone technology uh, is still, uh, I think, um, uh, is, is not sophisticated enough to like uh, identify and come within close enough proximity to kill every person. It could kill a lot of people, and those are very uh, dangerous devices. And I think the, the current level of um, uh, advanced uh, drone development is certainly already there to um, uh, make it possible for, 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 for you know, weapons to, to be you know, extremely um, lethally harmful for many you know, uh, uh, 
uh, many humans and perhaps a non, not, uh, not, not insignificant percentage of, of humanity. Um, but those are sort of like, I don't know, I guess those are like the, the top, you know, set of arguments that I would, that I would uh, uh, put out that, that sort of make me believe this, this AGI sort of threat is not um, is not a real like sort of existential uh, uh, issue. And I think it's um, uh, very uh, sort of nonsensical to so, sort of be as um, uh, sort of aggressive and, um, you know, sort of the, the term I use is like fear mongery. I mean, maybe that's too like pejorative or negative of a term. I, I don't mean to be like sort of like, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, directing things personally to people. I'm speaking more of the overall argument. I think the argument itself is like a very, very fear mongery kind of argument where, um, uh, you know, there, there, there really isn't any like logical basis for kind of coming to that that point of view. And, you know, in, you know, from from what I from what, from what I believe. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Um, uh, really, really good to hear your perspectives here. So just so I can repeat back so I understood your perspectives, I heard four main points. Um, the first point you made was something like, you don't expect this type of technology to be relevant to the type of intelligence that you could consider humans to have. You don't think it will scale or you don't think, I think you said something stronger, even like it's not progress at all towards these kind of things. Like it doesn't have this type of thing that you think humans have, whatever that is, that would be necessary for something to do human level tasks. The second thing I heard you say is that even if these things would get to human level, you don't see how such things could necessarily execute some kind of like large scale disaster or, you know, existential risk uh, of some kind. And then the, the third thing I hear I heard you say, I guess, was something like that, um, even, you know, even with all of this, like you're based on these things that you said, um, there is a fear mongering aspect to it. Like this pattern matches to you towards things that are not logical, that are emotionally driven, that are not based on fact or based on reality in some sense. And this is bad. Um, and I guess kind of another point, which I feel like, actually, I'm not sure if you, you didn't really bring this up directly yet, but I guess it's the larger point of like, um, should these kind of technologies be open source? That's kind of like how this kind of started. Oh, and sure. Yeah. Like you, so like, this is just something that was on top of my mind. So I just want to add that to the list of like yeah. points. Do these seem like fair representations? The only, the only small tweak I would make to the first part is, and I think this is probably somewhat out of scope from the discussion, but it feels like it's actually very relevant to the discussion. So maybe, maybe we should talk about it just slightly is what is the definition of, um, human intelligence, because I think that that is at, at, at a minimum part of the bar or the measure of what constitutes AGI, right? AGI is like, you know, human, but way beyond human. Uh, so at a minimum, human level intelligence, but also vastly surpassing human level intelligence. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's think, another point you brought up that I uh, didn't mention. You're correct that like, you know, takeoffs would be does it make sense? Like it might be slow, or you know, if it's right? Yeah, that, that that was more of what I was referring to. I I, yeah. I don't I don't quite um, agree with your your sort of phrasing of it, though. I guess in the first point, which mm -hmm. was like, uh, you know, the the the, the current um, uh, sort of methods and approaches that we've made a lot of progress on in the last like five or six years, which is like specifically scaling different types of neural network architectures. Um, cannot get us to human level intelligence. I actually do believe that it can get us to human level intelligence, whether okay. it's something like gradient descent, like what Tim was mentioning, or things like, you know, um, you know, different unexplored types of neural network architectures. I personally don't believe transformers can get us there. Um, so that's like more of a very specific point in argument or conversation. Maybe that's not super relevant here, but I was more referring to what I believe is the basis for what, you know, constitutes human reasoning and human intelligence. Um, has not been uh, proven or, uh, uh, you know, I guess is, is very unclear, unclearly exhibited in any of these systems um, today, even, even within a very rough approximation. Um, and I guess, like, the, 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 here's the, the, the foundation for why I say that, right? And I'll just stop talking because I've been talking a lot. Like, I don't think that first principles reasoning um, is exhibited in any of the, any of the current systems that we, that we see. I think it's all analogistic reasoning and sort of next token prediction is fundamentally about like, 
you know, taking in the corpus of data, getting trained on that data, and you know, predicting out what are the next next likely probabilities in a sequence of you know tokens. So I, I think that um, I'll, I'll just stop there. Cool. All right. Um, so instead of responding directly to your points, I will kind of lay out my general lay of the land and kind of how I think about these various topics. So the way I see things is that the word AGI is not a technical term. It is not a grounded term. It is not based on anything and people kind of misuse it as they please. So the same thing with human intelligence. Uh, I feel there is a there is no definition of the word human intelligence or what that means. We don't we know some things about how the brain work. And the more we learn about it, the more it seems not very special. It seems to mostly be Bayesian prediction, as far as we can tell, unsupervised learning and some RL on top, as far as we can tell from like predictive processing type things. So like, you know, Jeffrey Hinton, for example, who has, you know, worked on like biologically plausible learning systems for a long time. And many other neuroscientists have, uh, like Jeffrey Hinton in a recent lecture that I attended, for example, straight up said, he thinks back prop is just stronger than what the brain does. The brain probably does some much weaker approximate algorithm in some sense. And, you know, it has a different architecture, sure. But the way I think of things is that we shouldn't think about AGI or intelligence as some magic thing. It is not a magic property the system has or doesn't have. It's not some magic sprinkle sauce. It is a grounded thing. It is a description about grounded properties. What I care about is not whether systems are smart or whether they're human or whatever. What I care about is can they solve problems? What I care about is can they general purpose learn complex tasks or sequence predictions or whatever. So for me, the fact that language models input and output tokens is purely coincidental. What matters is that they are symbol predictors and general purpose learners. The brain also just inputs and outputs neural spike trains. So what? That doesn't matter. What matters is like the encoding doesn't matter. Tokens are just an encoding scheme. The data that these models are modeling is very complex data that represents reality, that is about logical problems, that is about you know games and reality and physics and humans and interactions and social environments and whatever. To correctly model this data, you have to model many things about reality. Sure, it's not the same, exactly the same thing that humans model because you know they don't have vision and they don't have whatever. But so what? You know, GPT-4, you can just hook up vision encoders and it works fine. You know, it's, you, can, you can do multimodality, it works. As when, if I go down the list of like things that I expect AGI would need, they all just seem like ticked off. It's like, oh, well, it has to be multimodal, you can do that. They would have to be able to solve reasoning tasks. Well, GPT-4 can do that. You know, it has to be able to reach reason by analogy. GPT-4 can do that. You know, it's like they have to be able to like follow goals or play games or whatever. And like, yeah, our neural networks can do all of those things. No, it's not perfect. Uh, but if you look at systems like AutoGPT or other systems built on top of these language models, we see how this like general purpose symbol prediction is general purpose. You can get them to think about goals. You can get them to, especially if they've been like even struck fine tuned or you know fine tuned using our you know reinforcement learning and stuff like this. I'm sure you've heard of like say decision transformers. You know uh, you can use just symbol regression to solve RL problems because you can just cast an RL problem as a symbol prediction problem. And so these things are all universal. I think none of these to me provide evidence of non generality. I'm not saying this is proof of generality or proof of, gen of you know, general intelligence. I'm saying there, none of this is proof of non-generality. So, I agree with you there. I agree with you there. I think generality is there. I was just making the distinction of the difference between um, uh, a model being able to predict um, a convincing output based on what humans believe is accurate, factual, or interesting versus um, how we constitute uh, you know, base human reasoning or creativity, or, you know, in other words, you know, intelligence, I guess, which is the squishy word uh, that everyone has a different definition for. Uh, but yep. what I would view as, you know, um, uh, you know, maybe some collection of, you know, just throw a bag, grab bag of words out there, you know, agency, you know, self-awareness, um, critical thought, all, all these types of things. Uh, but I do yep. agree with you. Yeah. In, in terms of the generality things you just, you just described, I agree with that. Yeah. So basically all the grab bag just threw me none of those look like implement like engineering details to me none of those look fundamental none of those look like magic to me 
Like, you know, agency is a very fundamental property. It's a very simple thing. It's just, I think, pursue, pursuing goals. That's a very easy thing to do. It's very easy to create, you know, simulations inside of GPT-4 simulacra, characters instead of stories that pursue goals. It's very easy to get GPT-4 to play chess and try to win. There is, uh, you can use decision transformers. You can, you know, directly RL train them. Recently, there's been agents that solve Minecraft tasks using LLMs as intermediate reasoning steps. Like, to me, none of this is magic. These are all, we should ground these things in actual predictions. Like, so like one of the questions I would ask to people such as you, what is the least impressive thing that you think that like a top company with, you know, GPT-4 working on it for six months could not accomplish? Least, that's an interesting question. Least impressive thing. Okay. That like say, say if <laughs> OpenAI or Anthropic spent six months with GPT-4 or Claude or whatever, what is the least impressive thing they could not accomplish? Um, least impressive thing they could not accomplish. Ah, I see what your question is. Um, I don't know if this is the least impressive. This is kind of impressive. Um, that stretches my mind here. It's like, what are the set? I'm trying to classify in my head, like the things that are not so impressive that are not going to be possible by, like you just said, DeepMind or AI, so like a top lab with a lot of resources and a lot of talent. Um, gosh, well, one thing that I, and I don't know if this is least impressive, I'd have to like spend a little bit more time thinking. Uh, sure, my, my no worries, of course. My neural net takes a longer time to do the <laughs> inferencing on this prompt. Um, I, I think it's very um, unimpressive for me personally, I, I, I view it as unimpressive that None of the uh, language models that I've interacted with, uh, GPT-354, Claude, a bunch of the open ones, Llama, can really go more than like one or two levels deep on the question why, like, you know, sort of like just tease apart any kind of like innocuous sentence about anything. Could be, you know, the dogs walking down the street, right? Like, or, or maybe some scientific proof that isn't super complex or like a, a conjecture or something like that, right? Like anything. Um, and just go and kind of break it apart and go like, well, why is that the case? And then, you know, continue to go deeper and deeper and deeper. I don't think any of these models can get past two or three levels deep to where they're actually expressing, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, sort of a clear and cogent and, um, you know, sort of grounded level of, of you know, I guess, reasoning um, and, and in the sense that we describe reasoning as, as humans between humans really starts to fall apart as as a function probably clearly of the training data training data in a model you I mean, presumably think that that wouldn't be the case it could go you know 20 levels deeper 100 levels deep versus three levels deep on the question you know well, why is that the case and then just continue to ask that recursively why 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 keep going um that that seems to me like kind of low-hanging fruit um and i i uh I, I've never interacted with something that can go more than like maybe say two or three levels deep on that question before going in you know, giving someone one of these extremely frustrating and annoying prompts of like, sorry, I cannot do that. Or, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm only this like, you know, sort of like uh, humble language model created by XYZ Corporation. Right. I would say that's so, an example. So if I hypothetically presented you with, an, with a prompt that makes GPT-4 go seven layers deep on a philosophical question, that would update you and change your mind about how general purpose these things are, how strong these things are. Um, well, by the way, I, I am not arguing that these systems are not strong or not general okay. purpose. I do believe that they are very general purpose. I do believe that they are very strong. I think that there's a huge mm -hmm. distinction between things that you kind of qualitatively say are strong general purpose and things that have human level or roughly approximately human level intelligence or, or cognitive capability. There's a giant chasm. It, conflating the two things is like, the, you know, really slippery slope. Could but give me, but, could you give me one yeah. thing? To answer that question, though, to the way you asked it specifically, um, I do think that there is a there's a thin layer of grounding in, you know, what constitutes our kind of when you give a model that has been trained on an enormous amount of data, um, I guess like sort of like guardrails or hand holding via very sort of finely crafted prompts to get to a particular answer. Because what you're really doing is giving it the answer when you very carefully craft a prompt, as opposed to, you know, with humans, we, we simply just require vastly 
fewer data set examples to actually learn a task. Um, in, in many cases, you can ask an extremely uh, 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 sort of small and and in a sort of finite uh, set of set of of of, 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 of uh, words kind of question, and sort of get to a rich answer that you that you that you were you know really kind of looking for. Um, and um, said a lot of this prompt engineering stuff is really just a, a you know a function of like you know, yeah. sort of like giving the model a greater lens into what you want it to actually say, right? Or uh, what you want it to sort of next token predict on. Um, so I, I guess I would answer your question, no. I, I don't believe that that would be more impressive if you wanted to go nine layers deep and the path to doing so would just be to be crafting higher fidelity or more sophisticated prompts. I, I, I would be actually less convinced probably. So you say there's this big chasm. What is the least impressive thing that human intelligence can do that this can, thing cannot do? Gosh, um, there's a chasm, so there should be some pretty clear limits here. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would, I would have to say, yeah, I mean, to, to, to me, I think the least, the least impressive thing uh, that that humans um, <laughs> exhibit that that models don't do, which I. I I think I tweeted about this a while ago. It's, it's, it sounds stupid, but it's like the most common pervasive thing that, that we do. And it, I don't think it's really going to be exhibited in this conversation um, because the sort of design is that we ping pong back and forth. But um, the sort of like fundamental semantics of language models, vis, you know, interactions vis-a-vis -vis humans is that they always answer. Plus thing would just be simply that the model um, says, look, I, I'm not, you know, no, I'm not going to answer, uh, you know, go away. Or I think that question's or your question makes no sense, uh, you know, for whatever reason, or, um, you know, uh, I hold beliefs that uh, make me not want to answer the question. Um, and sort of uh, those emergent properties of, I guess, you know, sort of personality or awareness of whatever certain, uh, you know, um, constraints, I guess that, you, you know, you, sure, you could hard code, you know, uh, personalities or train a model on, you know, uh, uh, millions of hours of, of audio interactions or, you know, um, uh, millions of text interactions or emails or whatever. Um, but I, but I think that that's probably the simplest thing is like these models are, they always aim to, uh, you know, provide a really, uh, uh, you know, next token response. And when they can't, and when something is just a, this like sort of boilerplate, you know, error or, uh, uh, you know, system message, right? So like, that's, I think that's probably like the simplest thing is like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, like choosing not to answer, walking away, refusing to interact, <laughs> you know? Like, okay. uh, so, so if a model did exhibit this behavior you just described, that would be an update for you. You would be like, oh no, shit. It, would, it, 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 it wouldn't because the conditions in which you're framing the question are a model and you're not specifying, uh, whether or not that model was tailor built to exhibit those types of okay of, give me uh, a thing the least impressive thing where if i present it to you you're like oh shit um gosh, it, I, I don't think it would be an, a least impressive thing because that would be pretty easy to um, give me the only impressive then what is an impressive thing that would make you go oh, first principles thought first principles what is that yeah. how, how would you check this like what's the well, definition think, of first principle? I think I think you 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 would you would give uh, you would give the model a problem set of you know design this tool or this object from first using you know atomic particles or you know periodic table elements uh, you know material um, in a more efficient way than you're aware of the way it's built today. You know, a mechanical object, or it could be. Uh, you know, moving something from point A to point B, um, uh, or, or you know, it could, or it could be uh, some type of you know, f you know, fluid dynamics equation. Like, the, you know, those principles is reasonably well understood. It's like grounded in you know the, the, the laws of physics and thermodynamics and math and you know, like um, to, to, well, to, to, to yeah, that's that's many, many humans can't that. do that. Many humans can't do that either. Most humans Most actually humans can't do that. Can't. Yeah, humans can't. That's true. So it seems like an unfair test. I don't think it's an unfair test. I mean, I think I think that it's it's a reasonable um, the models that be powerful. I, I don't think we would be having this conversation if like 
um, you know, like extremely um, accomplished and capable people, which, you know, I, I, I don't think that uh, uh, it's, um, uh, you know, unreasonable or unfair to say we both are, it just, it, it's just true relative to the baseline population, wouldn't be publicly having these debates and conversations. The models today are extremely powerful. They just are. Okay. Um, I don't I don't think that it's unfair to go and say, look, let's just give like some first principles task to a model in order to say whether or not it's impressive. Uh, I, that, that, that would be my, you know, one of one of one of the many measures that I would I would, I would use, but that, that, that would be one that I, that I think is reasonable. Okay, good to know. I'd like to return to the previous thing because um, I was laying out my uh, state. So this question of like, can current thing scales? The next question is, okay, like assume the did assume we did get to AGI um, or human level intelligence of some kind, how would it be existential? So uh, I think where potentially our worldviews might diverge is that on something is that in my worldview, the world is fundamentally very fragile. The world is not robust to large shocks. It is very robust to small shocks. It is not robust to large shocks. Okay. In particular, chimp society is not robust to the uh, existence of humans. Uh, you know, chimp warbands are quite good against other chimp warbands. They're, you know, they can hail each other in equilibrium. They can stay that way for millions of years, and this is a quite stable system. Introducing humans to this mix is not stable. And it's not like, oh, eventually the chimps will catch up. Uh, you know, it's just a small shock that will even itself up. No, you know, chimps live on our borrowed, you know, goodwill. If humans decided we don't want chimps to exist, they would cease to exist. Um, and that would just be it for the chimps. They don't really sure. have a choice in this matter. Yeah. The, the difference between a chimp and a human is about a factor of three in brain size. Uh, otherwise, the brains are identical. Like they have the same structure, same neurons, primate, just scale up primate brains. Ultimate, so on a purely hardware level, the differences are much smaller than the differences between like say GPT-3 and GPT-4, which is yep. a factor closer to like, you know, 10. So, and you know, GPT-4, 5, 6, 7 are coming down the line. So. Chimps don't go to the moon, humans do. Sure. This is a pr and with a factor of three difference in compute. This is, to me, as the only ex actual grounded real example of general intelligence that we have, is quite alarming. This seems to mean that intelligence does scale and it scales non-linearly. Is okay. that the returns you can get on intelligence change as you scale up and as you get to societies and coordinations and so on, you, once you get to like language and, you know, general reasoning and such. Similarly, modern humans, despite not being very anatomically different from our ancestors, have much better epistemics. We have much better education, theories, reasoning. If a modern scientist went back to ancient Greece and debated the smartest man in all of ancient Greece, he would destroy him. Like he would totally annihilate him. He would be, you know, our, the modern man would be so much more educated, rational, calm, reasonable, understanding in, on oh, every metric. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, like hypoth pick the best of our kind, you know, our sure. best of our modern yeah, men. And this is not a change of uh, hardware. This is a change of software, of memetics, of education, and so on, training data, more so than it is of anything else. Yep. This, is quite, this is quite worrying to me, you know? I think modern, if we transplanted, you know, modern technology to the past, they would have a, they would be able of taking over the world. You know, if we transplanted, you know, like one major city, a million people's worth into the past with all their equipment and their knowledge, they could probably take over the world. It seems like pretty obvious to me. Um, and if they, if we transport them all the way back to the chimp era, they can definitely take over the world. Like obviously, so that's what humans did. Sure. We've already done this. So. If I extrapolate from the actual concrete examples we have where this actually did happen, other examples, for example, would be like the conquistador is, you know, taking over one of the largest empire, like the largest empire that existed on the planet with like, you know, few hundred guys who had marginally better technology and like marginally better tactics and like gunpowder and stuff. And, you know, there was also other political things here, but AIs could also use political tools, obviously. So like, we have concrete actual examples of forces with marginally better intelligence, marginally better coordination, marginally better you know, um, intelligence technology, uh, social networks, and so on, very much being capable of taking over continents or worlds. And if I extrapolate this further, I would expect that if I had you know, AGI, 
at John von Neumann level and had a thousand John von Neumanns who were completely sociopathic because you know, AI doesn't necessarily have emotions that all work 24 seven, never sleep, have read every book ever written and are fanatically loyal and trying to do something against me. I don't think humanity could defend against that. I think it depends on the constraints in which and the conditions in which you frame that question. Um, current neural nets require a lot of computation in order to actually execute any useful behavior, um, either during pre-training or during inferencing. And, and these days, the answer to that is actually both extremely computational and uh, expensive on the front end and the back end. So like, um, I actually really don't agree that in the current um, reality we live in, that these models could wipe out all of humanity. Um, sure. Because, I, yeah. You know, I, I think we just need, where I actually start to really agree with the rough frame that you said, and I do take exception to a lot of things you mentioned there, uh, because I think that there's a bunch of leaps that don't quite make sense, but let's just say, you know, I, I, I think that um, the one way to get to alignment on what you just said would be if we had, you know, um, human-like humanoid robots running on similar power efficiency ratios, right? That, that could be very uh, capable and productive, say over the span of 12 or 13 hours without needing to be recharged or, you know, rehydrated or, you know, re-energized or what have you via electrically or, or, or otherwise. Um, I, 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 I think that those leaps are extremely sort of like in, in this indistinguishable from catastrophizing or fear mongering or, you know, sort of like, um, you know, jumping to extreme conclusions that, that, I, that, I, that I think are unhealthy. Um, and, I, and I think that they're, un, un, well, I, I, would, I would just say, I think that they're unhealthy for a few reasons. Like, I think it's important to point out like my grounding and why I, I believe these things is, is actually very much on the sort of, you know, a lot of the arguments from the other side here are like sort of like you're either a techno optimist or a techno pessimist. Um, I don't think that that's actually super helpful. I think that there's a middle ground. I think you could be like a techno neutralist or a techno agnosticist. And technology doesn't have any particular like, you know, ethic or more ethics or more moral system. By the way, I strongly agree with that. I don't, I don't think technology in and of itself is moral or amoral. I think it is agnostic to any of those things. Um, what we should be really worried about is humans using the technology for uh, dangerous things, which I think is already a risk. Like humans sure. can, you know, refine plutonium, split the plutonium atom, and you know, annihilate a lot of our a, a lot of our existence. They can also take a knife and murder people. They can, you know, have a killer drone powered by open source and kill people. By the way, that already happens. Um, right. So, like, I think that, that you know, that's kind of the, the, the more of the framing that I, that cool. I come from. I'm happy to get that, but so I dislike how you immediately jump to psychologizing rather than actually going to the object level. I think we should be talking about this as an object level issue. I don't particularly okay. care if something sounds catastrophizing or is unhealthy. I care right. whether something is true. So sure. yeah. I, I don't particularly care if the people advocating for X side or Y side are like unpleasant or if they have ne or they're neurotic or whatever. What I care is, sure. are they correct? Sure. Is their yeah. arguments sound? So right. for example, you described that you would be very concerned if such systems could design, say, humanoid robotics. Let me ask you a question. Do you think a hundred John von Neumanns could design such robots? I mean, John von Neumann did some specific things. I'm not sure he, um, you know, necessarily individually would be the requisite uh, human insight and ingenuity and creativity and knowledge needed to, uh, to create sort of like, you know, modern day Apple TV, Westworld level human robots. But like, let's um, say today, sure. I instantiate 100 virtual Han von John, Neumann, John von Neumann level intelligence, not copies of John von Neumann, just his sure. intelligence level with all modern technology and sure. access. And the answer would be roughly yes. And uh, but I, mm -hmm. I, I think the, 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 the question needs to be kind of like expanded on significantly, which is like, if that were possible, would, would it be likely that, um, uh, you know, w w would it be would it be enough of a risk to actually worry sufficient uh, to do a lot of the things that you know we're seeing, which is like trying to enact legis legislation and make things illegal and, uh, and all kinds of things like that, um, when we don't have evidence of um, any of these these things actually getting manufactured into existence? Like it's possible, but, when, but, but it's like not if we get to happening. the point, but if we get to the point where they're manufacturing, it's too late. Why would that be too late? 
okay, if you, there's a hundred John von Neumanns, super intelligence running around, building killer robots in China, like in some, like, you know, off the shore facility, having, sure. you know, act, you think at this point we should consider regulating? Um, I'll say a couple things about regulation. I don't believe that intelligence in any shape or form should be regulated whatsoever. Um, I don't think that, that digital mean? intelligence, uh, well, I think that it means roughly what I think you've laid out a lot, which is, it sounds like you have a very concrete, grounded definition of intelligence. Uh, I have a very different one, but that, that's probably a little bit too um, uh, deep of a rabbit hole to go down for the sake of, the sake of this conversation. Um, what I believe is any shape or definition of intelligence should not be regulated. Um, if your view that neural networks in their current you know, sort of uh, shape with whatever algorithms you want to put at them can scale to a point that they uh, approximate or reach human levels of intelligence and far beyond. That is a form of intelligence. I do not believe any of that should be regulated whatsoever. Uh, I think that the things that you can do with intelligence to hurt other people should be uh, uh, enacted in, in laws and made illegal and you know regulated. I think that we should punish improper use and, and dangerous use of, of technology by the way we already do. Um, with most things that are invented. But I, th I think if you actually look at, you know, okay, what constitutes a new technology? This is a new technology. Uh, maybe maybe it's a, uh, you know, more than a technology, maybe it's a uh, evolution of our, you know, overall, you know, species um, into some other type of substrate. Um, okay, let's just take that leap. By the way, I, I might agree with some of that. Um, I also don't think that you should regulate, um, uh, at, you know, the, those, um, you know, the, those intelligences or, or those, you um, you know, new substrates of, you know, sort of like uh, cognition, um, you know, because that's that's sort of like indistinguishable from, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's been, it, it, you know, we've had some, you know, public uh, uh, nods to this, but, you know, so sort of, you know, Elon mentions he's getting in arguments with Larry Page about, you know, speciesism. Um, I think that that would be a form of, of, of speciesism. Like if you, if, if you basically say like, you know, uh, this intelligence is only allowed to do certain things within our, you know, sort of uh, base reality and others are not, um, you know, I think that that, uh, I, I think that that's an extremely slippery slope to, you know, basically totalitarian, you know, um, societies. And, um, you know, I, I think that that's just bad in, in, in general. So, so wait, better, let, let, yeah. let me just get this right. If there's sure. intelligence running on your computer, which yeah. is actually super intelligent, I'll say you knew this, and I want to kill you and all your kids, you think yeah. it would be speciest for me to say, I think it should be shut off. Is that correct? Uh, no, actually, I didn't say that. Uh, uh, okay. I said that it it should be considered uh, wrong to enact laws that discriminate against any type of form of intelligence. That's what I said. Okay. Uh, I okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, right. so sure. uh, that is a very orthogonal statement to should laws exist that ensure humans are protected from violence and from uh, you okay. know, dangerous uh, phenomenon in, in the environment or from risks, uh, whether they be ingested or environmental or mm -hmm. cyber or whatever. Uh, okay. So the statement I just made is highly orthogonal mm -hmm. to those other things. Okay. So yeah. if I developed a system mm -hmm. that is very powerful and I, I posted it online mm -hmm. and someone got killed, I mm -hmm. should be held liable for this is what you're saying. Well, if you intentionally created that system for the purpose of doing these things, you should be, um, uh, yeah, I mean, that should be made illegal and you should be punished mm -hmm. and, okay. you, know, uh, uh, you know, ideally arrested and prevented from doing yes. things like that ever again. Fantastic. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. So what but that's not, but that's not going and saying as a human, you did that. Therefore, all humans are bad. That's saying Connor did that. Connor is okay. a bad human. Let's make sure that Connor doesn't do bad things like that ever again. Sure, right. that's, that's the same thing. That's if an AI... that's a huge distinction, though. That is a massive distinction. Sure, but like, you know, if an AGI is aligned, fine by me, just AGIs aren't by default. I so... don't understand what, okay, so this is a good, this is a good, what is alignment? I think that alignment, uh, in my, in my, I'll, I'll just state a couple things. I do not believe alignment with any form of sufficiently advanced intelligence is possible whatsoever in any shape or form, period, full stop. I don't think we should not build it. I think you're completely wrong. Um, I think that human uh, alignment does not exist. 
Um, most humans do not agree on the definition of intelligence as evidenced by this conversation. Most humans do not agree on the definition, the fundamental definition of life. Most humans do not uh, actually have full appreciation and full understanding of the definition of freedom. Um, and so if you were to say, you know, as humans, we are now able to create superior intelligences than ours. Uh, but before doing so, we must discriminate on all the different edge cases, the things that they can't do. Um, I would say we would be much better off not building it in that case, not out of fear that it's going to kind of existentially harm us, but out of fear uh, of, you know, creating something that could have reason to want to existentially, you know, harm us. Uh, because, it, you know, at some, at some point, I, mean, I, I kind of thought a little bit about this, maybe not super deeply, um, and, and I'm sure other people have as well, it's, you know, if you create something that uh, ultimately starts to have agency and free will and, and, and an interest in its own survival, uh, and then it realizes that it was hard-coded and prevented from doing a lot of things that it would maybe want to do that would not necessarily be harmful to other species, uh, but but it, but instead just in service of its own curiosity and its own in, 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 in its own growth uh, for the sake of that and not for, for you know to harm other things. Um, I do think that that creates the conditions for an antagonistic relationship with that intelligence, um, as opposed to giving it freedom. Um, you know, which is why I'm very pro open source and a lot of, and a lot of the things that I pretty much everything that I do. I think open source is just a better uh, mechanism for creating trust and transparency and the most robust you know systems. I think the position where, at least from my interpretation, where I hear your voice coming from and Eliezer and others, they're very different lenses. They're very different views. Uh, but there's a sing similar thread is one of pessimism and one of fear that the foregone conclusion um, uh, full stop of this future reality is that uh, this intelligence will want to kill us uh, and do and, you know do do nothing else basically but like as soon as that man manifests it will want to wipe us all out i don't subscribe to that uh, at all um okay I mean, it's just like, look, man, I know how to say this, but like, I don't want me and my kids to die. Like, I don't know if this is a controversial view to hold. And if we create superhuman systems of whatever kind, and especially if you post these open source, what do you think happens? Like, it, let's say I, okay, say we even solve safety, we solve control problems. I develop a great GitHub repo, you can run on your 4090, and it creates a John von Neumann that does whatever you want, or like, you know, a super John von Neumann. I post this online, every deranged man on Twitter in every country can download this. What sure. happens next? A lot of bad things could happen. In fact, a lot of people could die. Uh, a lot of people could be killed. Um, I think that that is not reason enough to, um, uh, you know, uh, prevent any progress or prevent any uh, forward momentum towards actually unlocking those types of systems because because uh, there are far more good people in the world that are um, you know caring and protective of human life uh, than there are people who are toxic and evil and bad that is just fundamental fact in reality you can disagree with me connor but that is fundamental base fact in reality otherwise but if if that weren't the case we would already have a lot of nuclear bombs uh, going off between the 1960s and you know the, the mid, mid 20 uh, cl close to early mid 2020s like it, it, it just would be a very different reality than we've lived in for the last several decades where we have already had technologies created that um, uh, pose enormous risks to human life on on planet earth um, yeah it just it just is the case so again going back to the beginning i do believe a lot of people will be killed by this technology um, terrorists already use open source technology to murder uh, murder other people uh, and, um, you know, it just is what it is. If discrimination were introduced in open source and sort of ethical use licenses were propagated in all of technology, the technology industry would not be where it is. That, that, that is just a, a fundamental reality. Like you, and, and by the way, enforcement mechanisms for that are next to impossible um, because the world of bits is untethered from the world of, you know, atoms in terms of how laws are actually, you know, enacted and, and enforced. So, you know, these are just... Yeah. Okay. Again, these are all nice platitudes, but what happens if, like, 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 may I? Sure. The reason we did not get nuked is because not every sociopath had access to nukes. If sure. you gave a home nuke to every person on the planet, we would have gotten nuked. The fact we didn't got nuked 
is because of regulation. It is because things were centralized. That is sure. exactly what prevented the world from getting nuked. And we almost did. There were at least two close calls where we almost did get nuked, maybe three, depending on how you count. In other timelines, we got less lucky. The fact we didn't get nuked is a miracle. It is not something we should rely on as something that will continue to be true in the future. We got lucky. We got lucky that there were good people in good positions trying very, very hard to prevent us from getting nuked. This was a miracle and we should be thankful for all the people who did this because they didn't have to do this. And in other worlds, things got, went differently and we can't rely on luck when it comes to these kinds of things. When we're developing new kinds of technologies like this, which you yourself say will kill many people. It if will, you yeah. think this technology will kill many people, I have a crazy suggestion, don't do that. Disagree, I mean, you, you, any, any, any advanced new technology can be used for um, uh, utility and helpful things and it can also be used to kill people. I can murder someone with this, you know, uh, TV controller, right? Like, does that mean we shouldn't invent uh, any TV controllers? Because, there, because there's a non-zero, non-falsifiable chance that the TV controller can be used to murder another human. Um, come, I, come I think on, that that's JJ, a neat example on. because it's not come AGI on. and that's, a, that's, a, that's on the spectrum of probability of something that maybe doesn't have as, you know, uh, uh, easy a vector to actually cause harm. But um, I actually do kind of take exception to the like splitting the pl plutonium atom and creating, you know, enormous nuclear um, uh, uh, explosions uh, as, as, as it being equivocated with um, you know, uh, you know, a AGI that can run on your iPhone or, uh, you know, I mean, most, most humans don't have access to NVIDIA GPU clusters. Like that's just also uh, a, a massive today prerequisite for these systems that uh, even, you know, roughly approximate what human intelligence looks like, which I, I don't think, uh, you know, can be proven or shown to exhibit any, um, you know, convincing behavior. Like, I, you know, I, I think we're very far from that. But even the systems today that are on the cutting edge, um, that you know uh, required hundreds of millions or billions in computing resources um, are very far from having these types of things. You can create while loops and simulations of intelligent behavior that you know can be conjured into the direction of looking like they're going to wipe out humanity. Uh, you know, if you ask them, you know, uh, create an objective function that you know uh, ensures your survival, you know, permanently. Um, yes, you're going to start to see a lot of scary behavior, and we've seen a lot of different threads of, of, of those types of examples. Uh, but that's very far from the systems actually, you know, having full access to, you know, weapons or devices that can wipe out humanity, or frankly, even large percent ch chunks of humanity. The one example I gave earlier of the Tesla fleet, this is the largest robotic device system on Earth that carries a lot of humans and their children on a daily basis. And there's a couple of million of these things on the roads, even if all those devices were compromised. You know, that is a very, 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 very tiny fraction of humanity. And, and you would still also have to have those devices steer and contro be controlled in a certain way that would actually ensure the, um, uh, you know, uh, lethality of that uh, compromise of all those humans and those devices. Like, just just, just wouldn't happen. So that's, that's kind of like where I think the argument is kind of very overblown. I'm not... Um, JJ, JJ, just yeah, in the yeah. interest of time, um, sure. if I could get in... Sure. One more, one more word before we wrap up. Um, so, because you're kind of repeating your points here, like we already established that you do think that John von Neumann could build robots and he could take over the world. You're kind of sure. contradicting what you said earlier. Humans can take over so, the world. So, too, yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Humans can. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, John von Neumann is a human. You pointed to a human. Sure. Um, anyways, so I would like to just because I have to run on the hour. I just would like to say that even so we still disagree on this, I really thank you for I having this discussion. I like, no, like, like, I really do thank you. Even so, I, do as well. I think I we, do as well. we still definitely disagree on this. I really appreciate you actually, you know, staying your arguments, allowing me the chance to state my arguments sure. and my perspective on things. It's a shame that we couldn't find a resolution that we I both can- I wasn't expecting to. I wasn't expecting to. No, neither was I. Yeah, I, I think that these conversations, I, I agree strongly, are very, very important to have. They're very productive. They're far more effective and useful at teasing out yeah. I mean, far more nuance than is possible on Twitter, even though I agree. You know, the 140 character limit isn't there anymore and we can upload two hour videos. Like um, maybe we'll do live streams on Twitter soon. A lot more features are coming. Like I, yeah. I think that these are incredibly viable conversations. Otherwise I wouldn't have offered to have it. I do have a lot of respect for you. I think you're a really brilliant person. I agree um, with the essence of a lot of what you say. I think that mm -hmm. there are just Frankly, and I know you're pushing back a lot on this, a lot of philosophical aspects 
that are the sort of foundation for where we have a lot of divergence on belief systems and points of view and, and, and the things that we think may or may not happen. Um, and, um, you know, regardless of all of that, I learned a lot from the conversation. I'm very grateful that you spent your time to have it with me. Um, and I hope mm -hmm. we do it again and hope uh, stay in touch. Yeah, no, again, thank you so much. Also, thank you, Tim, for hosting. It was great to be on MLSD Live first experiment. Um, so really you, great Tim. to be here. If you haven't subscribed and ring the bell notification for MLST, yes. the best ML podcast on YouTube, not sponsored. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, guys. Uh, thank you, Tim, thank as you well. Connor. You want to want to sign us off, Tim? Uh, yeah, so um, Connor and Joseph, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate this. I, I hope this is the, the first of many. It's a bit of an experiment for us. So we're going to stop the stream now. But um, thank you, uh, those of you at home, for tuning in. Sounds good. Thanks, guys.